Hi guys, so I just got off the phone with one of my best friends and our conversation was about how do you know when God is talking to you? And I think that this is something pretty common when people start to pray or get a little bit more spiritual or religious. And some people say God, you know, the universe, a bunch of different names. And I don't think it really matters. I think just the point of this would be, you know, how do you know if it's him? And um, my advice to her was sometimes it can come in different forms, just like people learn different ways. Some people can read a book, some people can watch that movie, some people can listen to it audibly. Um, so there are different forms and ways that God talks to you. And so one is when people say he speaks to you. And I try to explain this as this just very clear voice somewhere between your head and your heart. And because it's in your head, you kind of hear it the way the thoughts come into your own head. And it's it's just very calm and mellow tone, kind of the way I'm talking now. Um, I guess if I can give you an example, kind of like, call your sister. Or, I need you to move. Or, don't go down the street. You know, something like that check on your child something very calm very um relaxed almost i guess is a good way to put it um another way that he can talk to you or the universe whatever you want to call him is through signs um i give an example when i was talking about um back and forth with him about moving to atlanta when i'm an actress and i wanted to move to la when I lived in Arizona, because that was my whole point, was to get from the East Coast to the West Coast and then go to L.A. for him to direct me to move to Atlanta was so out of the ordinary, especially from the plans that I had for myself. And now I've been in Atlanta for seven years, almost eight. Um this is the second largest movie uh, filming industry statistically still on that border they still say new york is but it's the second largest um and movies are filmed here all the time so while i could have gone to la and paid out the butt for a place to live living here has been amazing and within probably the first six months i was on a movie set anyway so i think that, that was just wonderful but when we had this conversation after the still small voice went away i said lord give me a sign and one thing that i told her on our phone conversation was god always confirmed so if you're trying to figure out if it's you talking to yourself or if it's god giving you advice he always confirmed so after he stopped talking to me in that still small voice uh I said, dear Lord, okay, if it's you, if this really what you want me to do, give me a sign. And I saw a moving truck, um, which was like a pickup truck, because this is what I moved in when I didn't have a lot of money in Arizona. Um, the back of the pickup truck had my exact kitchen table in it, and they were moving. It was all strapped down, turned the corner. So this was our back and forth for about the next two weeks. Okay, dear Lord, if you're serious, you know, still give me a sign, and a, a U-Haul would hit the corner. And so it would be confirmation that this wasn't something just in my head me talking back to myself telling me what i wanted to hear and this was even a conversation of things that i didn't want to hear i just wanted to make sure that i was doing what he told me to do and the other thing is when you get that it's important to move swiftly because i think that when we drag ourselves we miss a lot of blessings and um a lot of times it's kind of like, ah, I meant to call you and I was just about to call you. I was just about to do that thing and then so-and-so got it. It's important to move when uh, you're told to move. So another way that you can look at this is um, when my mother passed, she was very artsy and she liked feathers. And so when she passed, I just started seeing feathers randomly and everywhere. And for me, I just felt it was her. So what I explained to her about, about this way is this is just more like a spiritual language. So if out of the three of us as friends, if I were to take a white sheet of paper, same size, and split it and give it to a friend of mine, and we both wrote phrases in the same font, 
in the same lettering and we gave it to our third friend, she would know from the lettering and the phrases and the way that it was written who it came from. So a lot of times when you're listening for messages, maybe you miss a father that's passed or a grandfather and you say, you know, I miss you, please give me a sign that you're in my life or you're around. That language will be something familiar, whether it's a smell, whether it's um, some type of symbol, whether it's just a feeling, those will come up in that language of that person. They will try to communicate with you um, spiritually in that language that you would understand to know that it would be them. Um, going back to God speaking to you, and so you can get signs, um, you can get um, a voice. Sometimes it comes in the form of dreams. Sometimes it's him speaking through maybe the next song that comes on the radio is the lyrics to answer your question. I remember being younger dating a guy and um, I said, dear Lord, you know, let me know what's going on with this particular gentleman, for lack of a better word. And as soon as I got quiet and I listened, I heard a dog barking. Very, very accurate to um, the depiction of this young man. So, you know, you can get kind of like these uh, third party messages to answer your question from the universe or God. And discernment is on you. So what they mean, you have to take them in. And, and once you get them, what you can always do is say, okay, God, if this is you, confirm. God always confirms. If it's him, he always confirms. Um, so a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, it, I just kept seeing this one thing or I just, you know, I just kept seeing this this number. I just kept, and I played the lottery and I won or I just kept seeing this, you know, message to call, you know, or sister or something like that. So you really just have to pay attention to um, those messages that are coming in. The last thing that I will give you is if you're listening for God, if you've asked a question and you're waiting for him to respond, what I find is that he likes you to give him his full attention to answer your questions, kind of like a conversation. If we're talking and then someone asks me something and, you know, and I'm talking, then, and then they start talking, I'm going to wait for them to be quiet. So a lot of times our days are filled with iPads and cell phones and conversations about nothing and TV shows about even more of nothing, you know, or us running our miles or whatever, music playing, just noise for no reason. And you are all of a sudden woken up at three o'clock in the morning. I've learned to wake up and just go, God, I'm here. What is it? Show me. Tell me. What is it? So um, I know that that's the hour where everything is quiet and I can hear him. And sometimes he won't say anything. Maybe I really can't sleep and I'll get up and I'll go to my computer. Maybe I see someone with a problem on Facebook or once I couldn't sleep, I got up and I went to Denny's at like 3 o'clock in the morning and I actually met um, a filmmaker, which was so odd. And and when you talk about him leading you and you moving when he says move, I remember this because it was just crazy. Nobody was really in a restaurant, but my and I was about to leave, and he was sitting there with a friend of his. And he's when I stood up to leave, he said, "Come here." And I came. And I'm kind of looking at him crazy, like he said what's wrong I said either this is about to be very interesting or very 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 weird at three o'clock in the morning and um he told me who he was I told him I'm an actress and you know conversation sparked from there but God puts kind of that that universal movement in motion to put you in certain places at certain times so that he can make things happen for you um a lot of times I'll speak for myself with acting I get very frustrated like when is it going to happen am i doing the right thing am i on the right path show me and i'll get maybe a phone call to do a project or i'll get um some type of renewed piece of information to let me know yes you are exactly where you need to be so it's just important to be open and aware but um i'm sorry getting off and coming back 
I told her I fast noise so he doesn't have to wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. If I, if I want him to speak to me, I turn off the computer, I turn off the television, I turn off the car radio, I, you know, text instead of um, speaking to people. And most of the time, more people can have these full-blown text conversations. I'm not that generation. But I'll text and I'll say, I'm not really in the mood to talk right now. You know, it's not you, it's anything personal. Is everything okay? All right, I'll talk to you later. And a lot of my friends respect that. So I just really shut down a lot of the conversations and the phone conversations to the people that I have to take, I'll take. But other than that, um, I just am quiet. And sometimes he'll tell me when I begin this, it's going to take three days for me to answer you. And it's just three days. But within that three days, I, you know, I pay attention to my dog. And they have a language. And that's another thing I want to leave you with. Everything has a language. I know we don't think it does, but everything has a language. And I look at my dog and where she she's just sitting there. And I'll look at her bowl and her bowl's empty. And I'll look at her and she's been giving me this message for the last 10 minutes. And I finally got it. Or how when you call somebody and they go, I'm just thinking about you. They were thinking about you so much that that, that just brainwave went to you and you got it you know same thing when your mother calls and she's like what's wrong with you <laughs> you're like how the hell did you know something was wrong with me so we we emit so much energy and we give off so much energy and so do other things so you know do not be remiss to when people say things like the hairs on my neck stood up or something just said turn around or no matter how hard I tried not to do this thing, I ended up at this place at this time and I met my wife or I met my husband. It is important to realize and recognize that we are spiritual beings having a, a human experience and in that we are so much more sensitive than we think. And it's okay to admit it. And I, I'm just glad that we're coming into a world where I can have these conversations with people and it can be received in a better light. We're not as closed off or shut down as we used to be to think, oh, you know, things don't work like that. Or no, there's no way. It's impossible. A lot of things are very possible. And it's being proven even more and more by science that, you know, spirituality is energetic. So, so really quick. Um, one thing that she said was she would pray and she would, I forgot this part, so I had to edit it in. She would pray and then something would happen and she couldn't figure out whether that thing was saying yes or no, go or stay, um, you know, happy or sad. So what uh, I can say is see how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel drained, then maybe it's a no. If it makes you feel happy, then maybe it's yes. A lot of times, sometimes you, you know, in a, in a bigger scale, maybe it's just your time to, um, to deal with that thing. And then maybe later on it's time to not deal with that thing. Or maybe right now it's a yes and later on it's a no. Right now it's a no and it'll become a yes. So um, just be open to how it makes you feel. I think that is very important um, that there will be a feeling attached to it if you're ever confused to the answer that you get. And you can also ask God to clarify. That's always a good one. Something that else that I learned is that sometimes when he doesn't say anything, it's a no. And sometimes he leaves you just like a father does to let you figure it out on your own. Sometimes it's not always meant for you to have an answer so swiftly. Sometimes it's meant for things to play out. So a lot of times we just want him to say yes, no, do it, don't do it. But um, sometimes it's just the fact that, you, you know, it, maybe you were meant to make that mistake in life. Or maybe you were not meant to have the guidance. Maybe you were meant to make that decision on your own. So... You know, just keep that in mind as you are um, seeking answers and waiting on responses. That is it. I hope this helps somebody. Um, I just wanted to, to leave you with that because a lot of times, you know, people are trying to get a lot deeper into their spirituality and their self and their, their minds and their souls. And they don't really know where to start. So if you're trying to figure out how God speaks. I hope that this helps you to understand and remember, if anything, he always confirms. So you all take care.